At long last, the signing day recap and the current portal movement in NFL draft nonsense that we got to look at for this upcoming Bruins squad here on Locked On UCLA. You are Locked On UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to this edition of the Locked On UCLA podcast. I'm your host, Zach Anderson Yoxheimer. Thanks for making this show your first listen each and every day. It's free wherever you get your podcast. It's available on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe, review. Thanks for your support. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. In the meantime, let's get right to it, right? For UCLA, the Bruins probably didn't have the greatest signing day. They probably needed some key pieces. They would have liked some more big-time talent to come in. They maybe would have liked to lose a little bit less in the portal and maybe some big-time talent all going to the NFL draft, which is what we're all going to cover in this shorter edition of Locked On UCLA. So let's take a look at what UCLA got, right? What did they have coming in in addition to what they've lost for this team? They've got 10 commits that signed for the upcoming signing class, right? They're expecting, I believe, 12 on signing day. They actually got 10 high school recruits. We're not including the transfers right now. 10 high school recruits for this UCLA class where, hey, the Bruins were looking for some talent to stick in, right? This is who ended up coming for UCLA. They were able to keep some of their key defensive backs for a class that came in and registered in 17th out of the 18-team Big Ten. So the UCLA 10 players that signed include Marquise Thorpe Taylor, offensive tackle. You got Isaiah Patterson, a linebacker from the state of Washington. Quasi Gilmer, who had that big time video that got played over and over again to make him commit to UCLA, the Sierra Canyon kid. Carson Gordon, one of two quarterbacks the Bruins signed. You've got Jameer Benjamin, the flip from Northwestern. Mark Schroeder, an offensive lineman. Christian Dunbar Hawkins, who can help fortify UCLA's hole in the secondary because they lost a lot of talent, a lot of players leaving this year's team. You've got Cameron Jones, Jensen Somerville, and then Henry Hasselbeck. That is your 10-man team of players who signed for UCLA via the high school recruiting ranks. One player didn't sign. That was Blake Tabarachi. He did not sign. He's unsigned. And we saw that last year, right? Uh, A big high school class for UCLA. One player did not go and get signed. Ethan O'Connor kept his decision open, ended up not signing with UCLA. So that is probably not the the way, I, from what I've read from the Park City, Utah product, right? He committed to UCLA in June, but with the rest of those 10, generally if someone's having a little hesitation, they might change their mind, just like Rob Booker did, right? The kid who decided to go to Wisconsin, flipped to UCLA, and then at the last moment, all of a sudden flipped to Wisconsin out of nowhere, And UCLA lost a big tight end product. And I know the Bruins, I thought, were having some talent. They have Maliki Mataval. They had the likes of Carson Ryan before he transferred to Utah. And I thought with Booker, they would be fine. So that's a key loss with someone flipping back to Wisconsin like that at the last moment. While you look at the UCLA talent coming in, what I was discussing all the summer, they were going after defense and offensive linemen heading to the Big Ten. And while I wasn't expecting the exodus with the likes of John Humphrey and Kamai Ramsey going to SC after it's all said and done following Danton Lynn, even Nimbo changing spots, right? A lot of talent and just a lot of depth in the secondary all leaving to go elsewhere when UCLA says desperately needs some talent to stay in this on this team. And the Bruins were able to keep Dunbar Hawkins, depending on where you rate him, three to four stars, one of the higher rated recruits depending on the site you use, whether it's a 24-7 sports and on three rivals, they all disagree. I think Dunbar Hawkins was a good product to keep signed. And then you've got Jameer Benjamin, who can be used in a variety of ways. He's someone in the secondary the Bruins needed out of West Bloomfield, Michigan, a three-star product rated just a little bit higher from Dunbar Hawkins. So the Bruins, they're not going to replace the talent that they lost. They're getting some good talent in. I'm happy with what they got in the secondary. The linebacking core headed by Patterson. We'll see how that you know transpires with the, the linebacking room right now, right? With 
Ken Norton Jr. He can coach up in his in his own room, his own position group. And I wonder if UCLA is going to lose any more talent defensively. So far, the Bruins have lost the secondary. They've lost players on the D-line, the Murphy Twins, and Latu all declaring for the NFL draft. I just wonder, all right, in the linebacker room, you didn't need a lot of talent this year. That's why with Tabarachi not signing at this moment, it's not the, the worst thing right now for the Bruins. They need to fill depth and replace extreme talent on the D-line. Fill the extreme hole that is the secondary with all the players leaving. And they did that a little bit, a little bit for this team. Meanwhile, for UCLA skill positions offensively, they didn't really need to go after anybody. And honestly, they truly didn't. Quasi Gilmer is unique, right? He's a freshman receiver coming in. But if you think last year, they brought in Jeremiah McClure, who is about a four-star receiver. He went in the portal after not getting a lot of PT in his first season at UCLA and seeing after the quarterback debacle. You could see why, all right, I'm happy to see a talented receiver come in, three- to four-star product like Gilmore. I wonder what his upside is in his first year, but that's someone to replenish the skill position group that I'm not thinking needs too much, right? Despite losing Keegan Jones, despite losing Cam Brown, and now Carson Steele going to the NFL draft. Yeah, he declared to go to the NFL draft. That's probably a big reason why he didn't play in the L.A. Bowl a bit banged up and not playing the bowl game is going to keep his draft stock high. I thought he had a good season for UCLA. Although I think the running backs room is fine. TJ Harden will be great. I think alongside with Ethan Garbers, those are guys that can help bring you along the first year of big 10. The one thing I wonder is now that the NCAA opened up the, the floodgates for multi transfers, right? You could transfer multiple times as an undergrad. I think that, that could be dangerous with J. Michael Sturdivant and Kyle Ford if they decide to leave. There's nothing that's saying that they will, although with the frustration with how the quarterback situation played out and probably the lack of touches they got in 2023, UCLA has to be aware at the moment that if that's how things stay with players being immediately eligible, if they're multi-transfers, if, they're, if that's the way this is going to keep going, then UCLA might be in danger of losing more talent in their receiving group. If they stay, the Bruins didn't need to get too much offensively in the skill positions. Offensive line, the big thing was Spencer Holsteg. He came back. He's one of currently, I looked at on three, less than 1% of people in the transfer portal who withdrew their name, right? He's currently one of those guys, thousands and thousands of names who put their name in the portal, surprisingly, because he was a starter. UCLA could have been returning close to 60% of its starting offensive line even though they need some upgrades and they need some continuity. It would have been nice to get that continuity. He's coming back, the transfer from Purdue, and that, that's huge because he's one of less than 1% of talent that is returning after putting their name in the portal and withdrawing their name at this point. So UCLA, looking at the offensive line, they had Marquise Thorpe-Taylor coming in right now. They had Mark Schroeder, three separate offensive linemen coming in. They beefed up. Not as much defensively as they would have liked after some decommits and players changing their minds. Offensive line, the Bruins got quite a bit of talent coming in. And I, I would like to see how it develops and UCLA grows over the years after a very up and down year protecting the quarterback. Regardless of who played, Schley, Garbers, or Dante Moore in 2023, one of the biggest problems and what led probably to the carousel of quarterback rotations what led to a lot of QB injuries is the fact that this team couldn't pass protect. Bringing in what they did with the offensive line, I think will be interesting to see how it develops over time. Then for Cameron Jones, you've got someone who I think fits the mold of a typical Chip Kelly running back. I don't know about you, but Chip Kelly can recruit a running back, whether it's in the portal, find guys he likes now in high school. Cameron Jones is that prototype Chip Kelly back that he likes, that big physical back. That is going to go well with TJ Harden, and I think we'll have good times with UCLA for years to come if that's how long he stays with the Bruins. Overall, you look at the portal. We haven't even touched it at the moment. We've got Mateen Bagani. You've got Rico Flores, Brian Addison, and Marcus Radcliffe. A couple of those guys we already knew. Rico Flores, a transfer receiver from Notre Dame, coming to UCLA. 
And then the Cal kicker who took over for Cal's kicker who struggled then after he missed a lot of field goals that cost them their Auburn game, made a bunch of field goals. He's going to come into UCLA and hopefully fortify a kicking unit that was much maligned in 2023. So one, I do like what the Bruins got in the secondary. A lot of youth, a lot in the transfer portal. It's not going to make up for the loss of the starting DB and Humphrey and definitely not the talented Kamari Ramsey who is a redshirt freshman going to his redshirt sophomore year over across town. The portal so far, I think Chip Kelly's gotten what we like. I, I like the addition of Rico Flores. I, I like the fact that they got a kicker. They addressed that. RJ Lopez went in the portal. UCLA is losing some starters from last year's roster, but I still like what they brought in. Obviously, it's very disappointing, extremely disappointing that this team is ranked in the 17th spot out of 18 teams in Big Ten recruiting classes. And there's not a lot of good vibes going on right now. I know there's happiness after winning the LA Bowl. I know it's happy. We know that Garber's returning along with Colin Schley. I think that's important. So you can get that dynamic back for next year, right? Where Garber's being your starter quarterback. You can have the likes of Schley, a backup one, and then two, utilize his dual threat ability when you want to switch things up in a dual QB role limited but dual QB role overall and then hey if the Bruins can get another offensive lineman or two offensively Chip Kelly's team could be in for a bounce back year the portal needs for UCLA after looking at what they brought in plug and play offensive lineman or maybe one of these three that you brought in can start right away you've got at least I believe three returning or potential guys from this year's roster despite most of the portal guys not projecting as highly as they did on paper on the field when it came to pass protection. A capable running back who can slot in in the Carson Steele role. And you've got talented receivers who for now are still listed on your roster with another year of eligibility and haven't declared for any NFL draft potential at this moment from what I've seen if people want to change their mind at the last minute. So I think this offense could very well be in for a bounce back. It's not exciting. It's not the DTR, Jake Bobos, and the, the Zach Charbonnets of the world, right? It's not even the year before that with Britton Brown and Zach Charbonnet and a dominant offensive line. I do think this offense is in for a bounce back. Yes, even playing Iowa's defense in 2024. I like that. I don't know what this team is going to look like in terms of wins and losses. I do think the Bruins will have a lot better success offensively in 2024 now the defense when it comes to hiring a coordinator replacing the talent that's lost both in the nfl draft and the portal is going to be significant which is where ucla is going to have to find more and more talent maybe steal another high school recruit they want another one for the late signing day in 2024 because early signing days just basically become regular signing day all of that i think ucla we got to temper our expectations for the recruiting class I like the development Chip Kelly can do. Of course, I've been on record saying my thoughts about his job status, but at the moment, that's just not going to change. Nothing is going to change until something during 2024. Well, it's either we overreacted or we're all right, and the move just couldn't be made a year early with the buyout being a little bit too much at this moment after the multiple Chip Kelly extensions over the last couple of years. Develop the players, find more players in the portal. If they all hit home runs, UCLA could be in for an intriguing 2024 season, a challenging schedule, a lot of tough games away from home with the LSUs, the Penn States, right? Those games are going to be tough to win coming up, and I wonder what this freshman class can provide. All right, that, that's going to be a fun one. So that's going to be it talking football today on Locked on UCLA. And if there's more guys jumping in the NFL draft and the portal, we'll update that, all that and more on Locked on UCLA. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets when you win any $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Because if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app's super easy to use. Wide range of betting options, spreads, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season today. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. All right, so to wrap up this episode today, 
I'm going to do something a little different. N- nothing too UCLA-ish or anything in- interesting. So you might be wondering, hey, why was there no episode for a week and a half? Why was it just kind of ghost? Why did I just drop off after the LA Bowl? And I don't always share personal details about my life. In fact, I pretty much don't really do anything personal on the podcast. I try to keep it pretty strict with UCLA opinions or bad ones or good ones in between. But for me, over these last couple of weeks heading into the holiday season, of which I hope you guys had a safe and jolly one, however you may celebrate, for me it was a little tough. Uh, a month prior, in, in early November, I had the sudden and tragic passing of one of my dear brothers, and we celebrated his life in, after the day after the bowl game. So for me, I, I just couldn't find the motivation over the last week and a half to finally do a, an episode. So for that, I apologize. It was just... I didn't have the energy. I I couldn't do it, even though there's lots of stuff I wanted to talk about, whether it came to basketball, football signing day. But it was just a tough time when someone who's my age, brother, and just suddenly passes. So I just hope you keep my family in thoughts and prayers. And, you know, I'll try to keep episodes up, grind it back into the daily grind as we get to 2024. But uh, there's the reason why all of a sudden I just kind of dropped off the face of the planet. Just want to give you guys that update. So it's been tough. It certainly has been easy trying to get out of bad habits and just sitting there and being lazy and all that. But in the end, we'll we'll have fun. We'll get back to it. And hopefully you guys have a safe and happy new year. Hug your family members, hug your dear loved ones, your friends and family, and we'll get through this together. So that that's the update. That's probably, if you're wondering, why wasn't he here the last week and a half? Just little, little tough, a little emotional over the last month and a half trying to do episodes and then grinding through it. I just couldn't do it. I'm finally at that place where I could do an episode, but if one doesn't go up a certain day or a couple of days, you probably know what's, what's going on now. It's been a certainly tough and uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a tough one. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your support. And uh, we love the Bruins. So thank you very much. We'll talk to you again pretty soon. It's been locked on UCLA. Go Bruins.